All right, everyone, we are back with another webisode of The Journey to More. And this week, I am super excited because we have one of my friends. I can't even put it into words what he does. So I'm going to just read it to you. And I'm not going to mess it up because that's just how great this guest is this week. So Lionel Williams is a leader in the business world and community. He has over 15 years of leading in operations, business development, sales and sales leadership, business strategy, project management, executive leadership, consulting, the list goes on. Not only that, he's a business and transformational and presenting speaker. Lionel has worked with multiple companies, both domestically and internationally, y'all. We got a global icon on here today. Um, and that includes nonprofit organizations. He is the author of three books, three Anything, everything, or nothing at all. It is not that cold call. 10 proven steps to turn a lead into a client. I need that one, y'all. The Manifesting Faith Journal. That's the one we're going to talk about today. He holds a BA in English literature from the University of California, Riverside, and an MDiv from Princeton Theology Seminary. He is the father of four and the husband to Dr. Jessica Williams. Let's welcome Lionel. Lionel. Hey, hey. So good to see you, Jamila. How's everything? Everything is great. I want to say thank you for coming on. I'm excited for us to like really get into your latest work here, which is the Manifesting Faith Journal that you've created. And so one of the things that you're talking about in this journal is the power of positivity. Can you really break that down for us? What is the power of positivity? Yeah, you know, I've spent the last probably 10 years reading up on this subject matter. And it all started with a book called The Magic of Thinking Big. I think it was 2013 when someone suggested that book to me. And at that time, you know, I was in transition. I was moving to a new state, changing jobs. And, you know, I had a really uh, somewhat limited belief about what was possible, right? I, I thought I could make over six figures. I thought that I always would be, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. I thought that somehow we would always be in Section 8 housing because when you're in grad school, you don't have any money. So we were living in Section 8 housing. I thought that you would always have the pink stuff on the door and they were about to turn the cable off and turn the water off and you had to run really quickly to the grocery store and pay that bill. Uh, and so I got this book and it literally just transformed the way I thought, the way I dreamed, the way I set goals and aspirations for myself. And, you know, it kind of boils down to positive thinking. You know, the way you think, the way you perceive yourself is, is eventually what will come out, right? How you see yourself is a production and produces what will actually be. And once you're able to embody a positive mindset and once you're able to embody positive thoughts, you know, it, it will literally transform your future. There are articles and stories of people who have been sick almost to death and have gotten a hold of this positive thinking, this positive mindset, you know, who, who literally digest positive words and affirmations daily. And there are multiple records of people being able to heal themselves through faith and this word of positive affirmation. And so it's something I live by, it's something I, I really, really believe in. And it's the reason why I created the Manifesting Faith Channel. Listen, so in that quick blur, you just told us that if we really want to change our lives, change our thoughts, and actually live a life that's bigger than we dare even dreamed of, we need to be investing in this journal. Without question. Without question. Uh, you know, I sat back about a year and a half ago and I was at a crossroads and I said, okay, I need to figure something out. And so I was praying and love just gave me these instructions, and I thought they were crazy. I was like, why am I doing this? But I followed the instructions, you know, piece by piece. First thing he said was write out 100 goals, the most audacious goals you have ever set in your life, things that you feel like could not even be possible. Just write them out, just write them out. I was like, cool, I wrote them out. I wrote all 100 of them out. I didn't stop, it was a stream of consciousness. He said, okay, I want you every single morning when you wake up, when you roll over, before you look at your phone, before you think, before you breathe, grab this document, grab your phone, read it, read it, every single one, read it every single day. He said, matter of fact, read it twice. So I'll read the list and then I would read the list again. And then he gave me other instructions. Okay, okay, now that you've done that, I want you to pray, all right? Now I want you to get into this vibration zone and I want you to remind yourself of who you are, what you will become, what you will accomplish and what you have overcome. And then from there, read a scripture, read a word and a word of affirmation and then also a word spiritually in the Bible and combine those two in your mindset. 
And then like later on in the day, you know, look at your goals again. What have you accomplished? What have you overcome? What limiting beliefs have you been able to transform in your own mind? And I did it. And when I tell you, it, it in the moment, it didn't make sense. Right. Like, honestly, uh-huh. and I'm just being frank. Like, it was just like, this is crazy. Like, why am I doing this? And so for about six months, I did it. And I just, every morning, I woke up, I read twice. You know, I did my, my, my scripture reading. I did my journal writing. I set my attention for the day. I was in the vibration zone. And, you know, I got frustrated. I really got frustrated because it's like, why am I reading this over and over and over and nothing's changing? Mm. And so I stopped. Ooh. I gave up. I was like, this is, this is pointless, like silly. And then about two months later, I picked it up again. I had read another book. Uh, the book was called The Mountain Is You. And it was, it was a game changer for me. Okay. Uh, and I picked it up and I was like, all right, let me go. Let me just do it again. Like whatever, I'm just going to do it again. And that next morning I woke up and I started reading through my list. And then I started scratching off things. Wow. I was like, wait a second. I did that. I did that. And when, out of the hundred, when I scratched up 25, I said, okay, there's gotta be something in this. <laughs> there, there's gotta be something. And at the, like in the six months, I really wasn't paying attention. I had to transform the way I thought before I could ever transform what I saw. And so it was all in my mind. And so I was accomplishing goals piece by piece. I was getting to the destiny. I just didn't see it until I stepped away, looked back and said, oh my God. I, like what is going on? And it was it got to be further. It stopped me at some point. I, I get excited about this. I, it's literally just changed my life. Uh, oh. I, I wrote. I, I actually created a humongous poster board. I'll send you a text message of it. And on it, I wrote out, and you'll see in the journal it breaks out spiritual goals, relational goals, emotional goals, physical goals, like everything. And my wife thought I was crazy, but I created like a twenty-seven by twenty-seven poster board. Like it was humongous. I hung it on my back wall in my office and I would use a dry erase marker and I would just start scratching out these things. And I'm looking and I'm like, yo, like some of my impossible goals, because I tell you to write out some impossible goals, like astronomical mm-hmm. goals. Mm-hmm. Two of the three astronomical goals I crossed out at the end of the year. I'm living in one. I'm, in, I'm, I'm literally living in it. I said I wanted to live in one of the most prestigious communities in Atlanta literally gated communities, movie stars, rappers, everybody in the light lives in this community. You can't get in without a pass and security checking you off the list, literally. And I said, one day, God, I want to live in that community. I want to live in, I want my family to be able to walk into this space in a country club, play golf. My kids can do tennis. They can go to a restaurant in our neighborhood. I said, I want to be able to afford this house one day. And somehow, some way, by the end of the year, we were December 1st, we moved into the home of our dream. Wow. And on January 1st of the previous year, there was no way. It was impossible. Like, it was n- no, no way in the world I would have thought that I'd be living in the, the home of my dreams. And here I am. Listen, the Manifesting Faith Journal. You can see it, like, you, you can literally see it come into life right now. Like without even reading a page, I know that this is a game changer. I know that this is a life changer. And one of the things that you, st- you said that stuck out to me was we have to transform our thinking in order for us to see our reality properly. Right, right. And so if we don't do the work to really transform our thinking, we're done. That's it. That's it. David, David uh, Mackey said this. He says, your thoughts are the architecture of your destiny. Your thoughts design your destiny. How you think, how you perceive yourself, how you embody your, your future, that is what you will become. Here's another one. Magadne Gandhi said this. He said that your beliefs become your thoughts. Your mm. thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits and your habits become the values and the values become your destiny. Like it, it is it is the manuscript, the manuscript of it all. But this is where I think the conversion comes, right? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, four, uh, I think it was either Hebrews 4, 4, 11, 6. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. It also says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, 
You can say to this mountain, be moved, and it will move. That's Matthew. See, manifestation and faith in my belief. This is just, no, I'm not saying, you know, and I'm, this is just my theological right, right, thing. Right. <laughs> that, that faith and manifestation are part of the same, you know, really a part of the same uh, uh, mindset, right? Faith in and of itself, I think, is key. I'm a man of faith. I have a divinity degree. Listen, preacher, teacher, I'm out there. I'm with it. I've, I've worked in churches. I've led churches. You know, I've been up for pastoring churches. Listen, I get it, right? But I just truly believe, like, without faith, right, you, you can't, it's impossible, right? So your faith is what guides you, right? But the reality is I have never met a person of faith that also doesn't have an element of fear included in that faith. Ooh, you're going to have to break that part down because that's the, let, yep, stay there. It's just, that's it. Like, okay, when you have faith, right? We call it blind faith, right? Some people just call it just aud the audacity of faith, right? Just this belief that anything is possible. Like, if you really have a conversation with someone and like, if they're just being honest, there is an element of disbelief and fear that's always associated with that faith. Always, regardless. And I don't care. You can be talking to the most God-loving person in the world. There, there's a underpinning of fear that maybe this just isn't it. It's just it, right? And I think, I think it's just so, so, so key, right? Like, and, and a part of that process is having the, the boldness, the courage, right? The, the, the mindset to be able to say, in spite of this, in spite of what I see, I'm still going to believe, right? I think it was in the Bible. I think uh, the, the man with the six son, it says, he said, I believe, but help my unbelief, right? Like, help me to believe. And that is where yes. your words have power. And that's where manifesting, combining with your faith and saying, I know what I see, right? What I see doesn't change what he says, but what he says can change what I see. That's it. All right. I'm <laughs> Listen. Manifest the faith journal. Get it. It's a game changer. I'm hearing stories and testimonies from people. They're saying <laughs> it is changing the way I think, right? Because your situation may not change, but the way you see your situation will change the situation. It's Listen. all in how you see it, how you perceive it. I'm about to like crack open this journal tonight. I'm like, I can't <laughs> wait another day because I'm not living life in a manifested faith way. Like, what am I That's doing? It. I'm promoting right, things. Like, ah. I'll give you, I'm going to give you one more. Right. I'm just going to okay. one. Then I'm going to stop. All right. For everyone who asks, receives. The mm. one who seeks, finds. The one who knocks, the door will be open. That's Matthew 7, 8. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus talking to the disciples. Mm -hmm. But listen, mm -hmm. if you ask for it in faith, you shall receive it. And this is it. Oftentimes we assume that if the, you know, insane, just absolutely astronomical, like God give me a million dollars tomorrow, right? Like we have to be able to operate in reality. Right. And I say that, right? Like in the in the manifesting faith journal, yeah. it gives you instructions on how to actually set this up. Right. So it takes a couple of it takes a little while to set it up because you gotta write out your goals, you have to think about your affirmations, right? So it's important that you actually follow the instructions in the beginning, right? But but the reality is when you set these goals, they have to be out of reach. They can't be like absolutely insane. Like, oh, I'm going to be a billionaire. Like, okay, well, I mean, sure. I, I pray that God would give all give us a billion dollars, right? Like all of us. But they have to be so much. They have to be out of reach, right? And when you say out of reach, that means I'm stretching for it, but I can't quite touch it yet. I see okay. it and I know it's possible, but I can't grab it. And I need help to stretch me out a little bit further to grab hold of it. That's an impossible goal. Right. And so okay. as you set these goals and you're speaking them, you're speaking the goals in the atmosphere, you're putting it out there and you're saying, God, I depend on you. I trust in you. And I know that you say that when I ask that I shall receive. So, so Lord, here's a goal that is so audacious, so crazy, who's so out of reach that I, I cannot do this without you, without, without assistance from with my faith. I'm using my faith and my words, right? Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. So, so I'm using my words with my faith and I'm believing that this is possible. And I'm saying it 
every single day with dependency and trust and knowing if I don't see it today and I don't see it tomorrow, I will see it in my future because this is what you have called me to do, to match my faith with my future. And that starts with my words. To match my faith with my future and it starts with my words. That's it. That's Man. it. And if we backtrack our words, our words come from our thoughts and our belief system. And so as a man thinketh, so he is. You oh know, I I, 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 you know, I don't have no masters in divinity. I just know a couple of Bible verses. I can't tell you <laughs> that you've done. It might be Genesis. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's out there. It's out there. Uh, one of the other things that, that really sticks out to me is like some of the Bible verses that are the shortest in the Bible are the most powerful. Soldier. Like, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Break that down oh for me. Oh my God, be transformed. Transformation is an internal experience, right? It's not external. Transformation begins on the inside, right? Because when you're transformed on the inside, people can see transformation externally without even knowing you, right? It's like this. I can go to the gym all day long and lose as much weight as I can, right? Externally, I look good, right? I uh -huh. look good. Uh -huh. But if my mindset if the negative thoughts that I have when I was maybe a little bit heavier, when I would call myself fat, or maybe when I would say it's impossible, or when I would when I would think negative thoughts about myself, if that doesn't change in six months to a year, I'm still going to be in the same physical shape that I was six months before. Because it had nothing to do with my body. It had everything to do with my mind. My mind is where it begins. That's why we always talk about mindset work, right? You know, you know, our, our mentor, PD, it all starts with the mind, where your mind goes, right? Where your mind goes is where your future goes. If, if you are not careful, you have to be able to transform your mind. And when you transform your mind, everything else that comes after that follows. I have to listen to Jim Rome. I have to listen to Eric Thomas. I have to listen to David Goggles, although sometimes he uses a lot of cuss words, right? But <laughs> at the end of there, I have to listen to T.D. Jakes, right? I've got to listen to Nehemiah Davis. I've, I've got to listen to somebody every single morning. My kids will tell you, when we get in the car, when I take them to school, they're listening with me. Ooh. They're listening with me to some of these things. We're listening to Les Brown. Right. We're listening to these things because I want them to, you know, go on YouTube. It's free. Type in motivational speaks, gym motivation, whatever the case may be. That is something about that music. Watch this. And the words that are coming out of their mouth, going into the atmosphere. It's something about it that revs you up. You get excited. You get hungry. You like it. I can run through a wall. I'm about to go to the show. I'm about to light it up. It's, it's not because it's, it's fun or, or different. The words have power. That's why you have to speak what you want to see. That's why manifesting faith with your mouth, with your tongue is so powerful, so important. So transformation begins on the inside. And when you transform yourself on the inside, everything else will follow. Mind follows, body follows, spirit follows, your money will follow. When you break a broke man's mentality, wealth comes. And wealth ne doesn't always look like money. Sometimes wealth can look mm -hmm. like happiness, peace, joy, <laughs> contentment. Because I, so I know some rich people, right? By, by day, financial advisor. So I know a lot of folks in the billions of dollars. And they're the most unhappiest, saddest, scared people I have ever met, fearful of who's going to turn their back on them, who's going to spread their business, who's going to, who, if their spouse is cheating on them, if, if their spouse is just there for the, for the money, if their children are going to be trust fund babies. I have seen it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Sometimes the gift of manifesting your faith doesn't always look like what you think, but it's exactly what you need. Yeah, no, you you teaching us good today. Um, and one of the things that's come into my mind when you talk about that. So I did not go to law school in a traditional way. I was an assistant principal during the day. Yep. Crazy. 
and went to law school at night. And so oh. I'm getting up in the morning, like 5, 36. I'm not getting back home until 10. And so wow. one of the things that started to transform my life was like Eric Thomas, Les Brown, Tony, all the people were the people right. that I had to get up listening to in the morning to keep me motivated. Because literally yep. when I told someone, I said, oh, I'm going to work and go to law school. I mean, what? It's just law school, right? They were like, you're yep. crazy. You can't do this. You can't do that. Yep. You're not going to have a life. And I was just like, you can't tell me that. I'm yeah. going to try God and see if he'll bless me anyway, if he'll give me the yeah. grace for the journey. Right. Yeah. And so how do we navigate our own journey of manifesting faith um, with the, I don't know, just the naysayers coming into play? Even, yeah, if, yeah. even if you keep it to yourself, there are just some things people will notice because there has to be an outward you know, display of it. Yeah, yeah. So this is the way I look at it. Sometimes the goals that you set and the person that you are, right, you have to somehow insulate yourself from people who don't really see where you're headed, right? Not everybody can see what you see, right? Not everybody can see what you do. Some people who just, who will never believe. Yeah. There are some people who will always have limited beliefs. There are some people who will never see beyond the ghetto. Some people who will never see beyond you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars, you know, in a year. Some people who would never believe in entrepreneurship. There's just some people who are just unfortunately wired and aren't willing to change. And you know this is the case. And this is just for all those people out there that are dealing with folks who have these negative mindsets. If you hear somebody says, This is just who I am, oh, oh, they are putting a period where God is really trying to change them. They're Ooh. stopping God's ability to actually change their hearts. Right. Because if you say this is who I am, that means God's done. I mean, God is like, okay, you're you're basically telling God, like, I am perfect the way I am. There's no reason for change. There's no reason for regeneration, transformation, right? Sanctification. There's no reason for me to become better. I am complete and whole. And as broken as I am, this is where I stop. Mm. You're putting a period where God is still trying to make change, right? When you have people in your life who are like that, I'm not saying cut them off. I'm saying insulate yourself from their negative thoughts. Right. So sometimes you have to put boundaries in place that may seem hurtful at the time, but are really protective of them and of you. Yeah. I'll give you an example. There was a season in my life where there was a close family member that loved dearly, loved my God, you know, and, and we're in a great place now. But they had some really negative thoughts about some stuff that was going on um, personally. Mm-hmm. And my wife and I sat down and we said, you know what, this is a season of no contact. We had to literally, now this is a very, very close family member. We had to cut them off, literally. Wow. Don't call me. We're not going to call you, right? We're not going to call you. We're not going to talk for this period of time because we need time to, to, number one, refill our cup of peace and joy and sanity and sanctification and just trust. Like once we're good, we're also giving you that time to figure you out. You need to go to counseling. You need to go talk to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And and we will slowly open the door up to you when we feel like we're whole, but then more importantly, when we see growth on your behalf. And some people will never take advantage of that opportunity for growth. Then they'll stay stuck. So you have to insulate yourself and be able to protect. You can't answer everybody's cell phone, right, call. You can't answer every single text message. (laughs) Right? Monday through Friday, I'm not on TikTok or Instagram or social media. I I literally delete it off my phone because I can't have things like that interrupting my flow. I'm in a vibration zone. I'm trying to lock in, right? Napoleon has to his vibration zone, right? Like, I'm trying to lock in. I got, my mind has to be set because I have goals. Because at the end of the day, nobody nobody is going to be able to stand before God on my behalf and say what I did and did not do. That's my greatest fear. My greatest fear is not death. It is dying and knowing that I didn't accomplish what God called me on this earth to do. That's my greatest fear. I'm, I know I'm going to heaven. I know I'm good. I'm signed to it. I'm in the land book of life. But I don't want God to look at me and say, I gave you these opportunities and you were so scared to stretch out that you didn't even you didn't even accomplish what I wanted you to do. You could have been this, but you settled for that. I hate that. Oh, that's, that, that, that's it. Yeah, you could have been this, but you settled for that. Don't settle. Manifest your future. 
but scared to stretch got me. That was, <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was good. But scared to stretch. And I, I literally, it's funny because I promise you, this could have been like maybe eight, 10 hours ago. I was like, God, how much faith do you think I have? Like, mm. <laughs> I was like, because I think I've moved past the mustard seed. I don't mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm, coconut mm-hmm. seed, what other, the palm tree seed. I got some other mm-hmm. type of seed, but I'm like, who the level of stretching that it takes to really go after a, an unbelievable life is, mm-hmm. is, is, is oftentimes centered around doing a lot of illogical things. Mm-hmm. And so, That's so true. Can you talk to us about how do we move with balancing the tension of like the fear and doing something totally illogical? Yeah. So here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a scripture. It's the easiest way to put it. <laughs> For we live by faith, not by sight. Ooh. Some of us aren't operating in that scripture, We're really operating. We live by complacency and not by faith. Ooh. And it, it's this thing of like, Sometimes you have to do what doesn't make sense to be able to actually get what God has for you, right? Prime example. I mean, we can, I, we're going to take it back to the Bible because this is the Manifesting Faith Channel, right? I'm telling you, easy as, easy as pie. When Noah was building that ark and people were coming up to him and laughing and saying, bro, what are you doing? Like, there is no rain. It's dry as ever. There's there's no reason for you to be building this massive boat Man. in the middle of this plane while we're out here partying and enjoying our life, and you're out there sweating, cracking nails and wood to build a boat. And he just had to return to the same place in spite of the naysayers oh. doing something that seemed absolutely illogical, insane. I'm certain his wife and his kids were like, bro, what are you, why are you doing this? And here's the people that were connected to him were probably also being talked about. See, Ooh. that's the part we miss. We talk, we always think about what he experienced, but we don't think about what his kids and his wife experienced. Because they were probably in the marketplace buying nuts and figs and fruit. And people were like, your husband's crazy. Your kids hey. are crazy. Why did they start that business? Why did they leave their job? Right? Why did they stretch out on faith and open up that consulting group? Why did they write that book? Why did they do this? Why did they do that? Right? Why did they start this cooking company? Or why in the world did they step out and think they could be a coach? Why would they do that? It's not raining. Ooh. They it was it was good. The job was good. The company was good. The money was good. Why would they believe? Because they're saying, I'm, I, I, I know you don't understand it. I know it seems illogical, but I see rain in the future. I know we ain't preaching. I know we ain't in church, but I, I felt that <laughs> right there. Okay? I see rain in my future, and I'm just preparing, believing God for rain. Sometimes you got to be illogical. It got, it has, sometimes it, it just has to not make sense for it to actually make sense. I used to tell people like this. People used to ask me, like, you know, how did you make the transition from preaching and teaching to being a financial advisor? I said, you know, church is, is an interesting world, and it's probably another podcast, but I say talking about Jesus is basically getting people to believe in something that they don't believe that they need until they actually really need it. You don't think you need Jesus until that moment comes when you're like, you know what? Either I'm glad I made this decision when it didn't make sense, or I wish I would have made that decision when I had the moment. The worst time to regret not believing in God is the moment you die. And many people will open up their eyes and say, I wish I had that chance all over again. So sometimes it, it, it may not make sense. It's not going to make sense. You're going to read your goal every single day and you're going to say, this is crazy. <laughs> Why am I reading this? Why am I waking up? Why is this the first thing that I do? Why am I reading the scripture? There's a prayer in every single, on every single day, there's a prayer. Read when you read this prayer, you're like, why am I praying for someone else about my goals? Why am I why am I believing for someone else when it comes to my goals? But I'm telling you, hold fast. You're going to see it six months, nine months, a year. You're gonna look back and say, Oh my God, this makes total sense. Okay. So I I might mess some people up with this, but I think this is the perfect place to mess people up. 
So you <laughs> talked about not believing God. And when we choose to operate in fear and remain complacent, that means that we choose to not believe God. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think like, I, I just wonder how people are really navigating it because I know a lot of people who listen to this are believers and some may believe in other things. But if you are a believer, there is like an obligation for us to really sit down and work on making sure that we sit to hear and that we follow the instructions, because if not, we say we serve a God, but we really serve ourselves. That's so real. That's so real. It's scary, but real. <laughs> and it's like, it's why scary, isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? But like, do you believe God? If you believe God, right. you would have followed the illogical instruction. Right. Right. And, and I'm, I mean, I'm going to just be transparent right now, L. I'm sitting in a world of illogical instructions. Don't nothing in my life makes come sense. Come on. Come on. Nothing come on, in come my on. life makes sense. Nothing. Come and on. like, I'm always just like sitting here, like, all right, I don't want to talk to too many people about this because, like, why'd you go do that, Jamila? Why'd you go do that, Jamila? Right. And one day I was sitting in, in, in my apartment and I just started to like, just go over God's resume over my life. Mm. Mm. And the biggest blessings, which to me have been my mind changing because when my mind wow. changed, my life changed. So the biggest blessings have come when I've sat down and did something illogical. So let me give you three examples, L, and then... Shoot, shoot, shoot. What you want. So one was I had um, a pretty good offer to go to UCLA Law, Vanderbilt Law, Emory Law, um, wow. George Washington Law. And then I'm at brunch with my friends and I say, I'm not leaving New York. What? <laughs> like I had no law school that I had gotten into in New York. I had quit my job. So I have no wow. job, no law school, but I'm not leaving. Wow. Yes. Crazy second thing I did. And I this this is interesting because um I realized that God is always making me quit things. Mm. And that my seasons in different things are shorter than people would anticipate. So when it was like, all right, it's time for you to walk off of um, your job as an educator and go into law full time. Everybody's like, Jamila, you got a car, you got this. What are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. I just know this is what I know to do. Do that. Second, the last one was like leaving my job to go full time into entrepreneurship. And the greatest, the greatest outcome of that has been God introducing me to me. Mm, wow. The real you. Yeah. The one that he sent to earth, all the gifts that he put down on the inside of her and say, hey, you are Jamila Moore. And I need you to know that. But I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity if I didn't manifest my faith. Wow. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. I mean, the illogical, but doesn't make sense. Just didn't, I'm certain your friends and family were like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you give this opportunity up? Why would you move from this place? Why would you walk away from, from a, a wonderful job, right? Make it probably with the ability to make as much money as you could and ever dreamed of to step out, right? And I, I'm certain in, in this season of entrepreneurship, you're probably wondering to yourself, like, did I make a mistake? Like, is this, is this right? Is this real? What's the how bills are being paid? Doors are being opened, you know, hands are being shaken that will eventually lead you to the next level of your business and of your future. Entrepreneurship is not a straight line. It is just not. Entrepreneurship is mountains and valleys. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. It is mountains and valleys to get you to your ultimate destination. The challenge is a lot of entrepreneurs, they will celebrate at the mountain and then they will quit in the valley, right? Ooh. 
Mm -hmm. In my perspective, you need to celebrate in the valley and be thoughtful on the mountain. Why do I say that? The Why valley you... is is where you are formed. It it is the it is the it is in the valley. It is in the depths, the bowels. That's where you're being stretched. That is where your faith is being developed. Right. That is where your ingenuity and creativity and drive and passion is being is being formed and forced. It's like it's like gold on a fire, right? Glass on a fire. It is it is being formed into something in that moment. Right, because to get to the to come out of the valley and go into the mountain, you gotta grind, you gotta work, you gotta think, you gotta be creative, you gotta push, you gotta do things that don't make sense, you gotta shake hands that you didn't want to shake to eventually get you a place of level playing field, and then eventually accelerates the mountain. And if you can keep that same motivation, same hunger, the same drive that got you from the valley to the level playing field, and eventually to the mountain in that mountain season of thoughtfulness and contemplation, see, you're able to store up, right? Because you're not going to be successful all the time, not 100%. Some things are going to fail. But if you have something to fall back on, something that you can lean on and say, I remember when I was, right? That's why, just to kind of plug it in there one more time, in the manifesting page of every 30 days, there's a moment where you have to actually stop and pause and look back and say, what did I learn in the last 30 days about myself? What limiting beliefs have I overcome since Ooh. starting this process? What goals have I actually accomplished? Even if they're not fully accomplished, what steps have I taken to get me to a season and a moment of accomplishing that goal, right? Because you have to be able to be reflective, right? Of reflection is so important when it comes to this process. So you gotta reflect back on what, where you, God has brought you from if you're ever going to understand and appreciate where he's taking you. And so... You know, it, this 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 mountain valley season for entrepreneurs is is so important. So if you are an entrepreneur or if you're a student or if you're a mother who is trying to create a side hustle or if you're just an employee of a company just believing for a promotion, and you want to see something when it comes to your children, you want your children to walk in faith and not by sight, this is the journal for you. This is it. And we have electronic versions starting April the 1st. We're going to be doing hard copies or you can actually write it out. I like electronic just because I can use it on my phone, just roll over and boop, start working. But if you are a person that needs to write it out, we're going to have them available on April the 1st. Listen, I don't, I wish, you know, I could say like, hey, you know, it just, just trust me. I know you don't know me, <laughs> but trust me when I say this is the investment of the year, all right, of the year. I'm telling you, I wrote on a journal one day, I wanted to get on one private plane. I said, my goal is to just one day get on one private jet. One, I was like, I just wanna, I just wanna know what it feels like to be rich, just one time. I've been on more private jets than I can even count, yeah. honestly. <laughs> and that's like, and it took me a moment to sit back and realize when I, when I opened up my original 100 goals that I wrote, I said, oh my God. I was like, I want a certain kind of watch. I got it for Christmas. I was like, what? No, I want to buy this house. I want to close this account. I said, I wanted to start a side business and I wanted to make, so I wanted to make six figures in a side business. I made six figures in my side business by May. I was like, wait a second. And it took me until September to look back and say, I had to go go do the math. I'm like, wait, wait a second. This actually came to pass. This is manifestingfaithjournal.com just just check it out worth the investment you already then gave us a, a code too to get a discount the jmj that's okay, right J that's right you can Gotta go on in. there <laughs> use it take that yes. great use it <laughs> i'm telling you jmj there's a coupon section right there on the final checkout page Type in capital J M J. Jamila you know Moore Journal. Just type that in. You'll get an amazing discount. It is electronic. You'll get the link and the passcode. Don't spread the link of the passcode. It's for you only. Uh, it's a one-time passcode. Put it in. You'll be able to download the full document. The first volume is 120 days, right? So 120 days. Volume two will be available immediately. I want to say by April the 15th, volume two will be out. So all you have to do is come back. You get a discount on volume two. If you bought volume one, you get a discount on volume two. 
It's not a you know heavy investment. It's three cups of Starbucks coffee, basically. But three bucks of Starbucks coffee is much more, you know, it, it's so far inconsequential when it comes to you being able to accomplish your goals and dreams of the future. You'll look back and say, those three cups of coffee, you know, of an investment were well worth its weight in gold. So manifestingfaithjournal.com, use the code JMJ, JMJ for your discount. You can go right now, you can download it immediately. And trust me, if you have any questions, you can email me at info at manifestingfaithjournal.com. I'll be able to answer it at any point in time. Our team will be able to assist you. But lock in, grab it, motivate yourself, manifest your faith, read it. And listen, if you're not a Christian, that is okay. Hear me. That's okay. Because even you, one who might not even believe in God, you still have faith to believe. You still need faith, right? You, you can call it whatever you want to call it. You still need faith <laughs> to believe in something, right? So even in the language that we use, we switch the language up a little bit so that people can feel inclusive, right? We'll say to my higher power, right? When you read that, that's God. No matter how you see it, it's all about God, right? But we want you to be able to read it as you see it, wherever you stand on your faith journey, because we just believe that this is the book for every single person, man, woman, Boy and girl, you can be 14, you can be 85. My 86-year-old grandmother started working on her 100 goals yesterday. 86, writing out 100 goals. Because even, she said that her latter years would be, all right, let me stop. All come right. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Latter years will be greater than her former but love. It's, it's, uh, it's an amazing time to, to grab this journal. Invest in your future. Invest in your purpose. Invest in your faith. Uh, and produce what it is that I believe God has for you today. Yeah, y'all. You heard it from the Lionel Williams. We are so blessed to have him here. We're so blessed for what he's poured into us. And I just want to speak to somebody who's on the fence, right? And somebody who may not be used to investing in yourself. So to you, this may be something that's illogical, Right. But you just heard testimony after testimony of what happens when we do illogical things and how God performs in our lives, how God brings things that we could not have imagined, gives us access to knowledge that we didn't even know. And so I just want to ask you on today, is this the day that you're going to decide that you are worth more? And that your future mm-hmm. is worth you making a different type of investment. Mm. That's good. Is it worth it? I hope it is. I hope people hear that and will stretch for the impossible and say, you know, this week I'm going to spend $15 and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to spend $20 and get a hard copy. I'm going to do whatever I can. I'm going to buy a few for my friends and family so they can believe as well. Uh, you know, I, this is all about, this is an investment. This is an investment in your future. This is an investment in what can be, right? Uh, my family and me, we, we are avid readers. I learned from our mentor, Darius Daniels, never leave the posture of a student. I'm reading 60 books a year. Why? Because I'm always feeding myself with what is new and current. I'm always learning. Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, reads 500 pages a day. That sounds insane, but a day. And I trust me, I, I confirmed it today, a day, right? All right. Bill Gates reads six books a week, okay? That is how much they spend, 80% of their day reading. And they're the richest people in the world. They're learning, they're growing, they're believing in you. So if you want to do that, invest in your future now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I want to give you the space to leave any final thoughts, but this just like leaped (laughs) into my spirit. And it's something, it's it's a staple for me. Um, I think about the parable of the talents and Sasami gave five, two, and then one, right? And so God, you know, five reinvested, two reinvested, one didn't reinvest. And I was just like, well, they went to weeping and gnashing the teeth. I'm like, I don't want to go to weeping and gnashing the teeth. But what I started to learn by meditating on that parable was the idea 
that we have an obligation to use what's down on the inside of us. And even if we don't have the right instructions, we have a duty to figure out what we need to do to multiply. Yeah. Yeah. To grow, to develop. And so if we're in a space where we're not growing, we're not developing, we're not multiplying. We're, 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 we're being like the one with the one talent. That's right. That's right. And the gnashing of teeth, right. And the eternal damnation, right. The, you know, some would say that's the extreme version of it. Right. Yeah. The way I look at it is what he had to live through. Cause his life didn't end at that moment. Right. He continued right. to live. Ooh, right? Come on. What he lived through was the unrealized potential of what could have been. That was his gnashing of teeth on earth. What could have been. He did not do what others were willing to do. What didn't make sense to him, right? Others were willing to stretch. And for the rest of his life, those words were probably echoing in his ear. What I could have just doubled. And and I'm frustrated with the one I have, but I at least could have had two, right? I tell in in our circle of of, of entrepreneurs, they always say, well, I only made $50 today. I only made $100 this month. That's $100 more than you had yesterday, Okay. Right. That's $100 more than what somebody else had a week ago. And that 100 you can reinvest in yourself, and that 100 might turn into 1000 one day. That 1000 may turn into 10000 You might be in the million-dollar club one day. You never know, right? Do not fret humble beginnings, right? You never know where you begin, right? God knows the ending, but where you begin is all about your mindset and where you want to be. So, yeah, it's um, don't don't give up. I don't know. That's just that's in my spirit. I don't know. This could be just for the one person who's watching this right now out there in this wonderful podcast world that we live in, who has been contemplating, who's been on the line, who's been debating, should I just throw in the towel? Should I go back to work? Should I give up on this business? Should I give up on this opportunity? Should I not stretch out? Should I not believe in what could be? That you've been feel like you've been beating a wall and nothing's changed. You feel like you've been running and you have not yet made it to the point where you want to be. I'm telling you, don't give up. Keep believing. Believe in the impossible. If you need motivation, if you need a book, email me. I will give you, I have tons of books. I'll tell you, oh, this is where you are? Read this book. Oh, this is how you're feeling? Listen to this podcast. Listen to this sermon. Listen to this person. I, I have no problem. There's no, there's no fee associated with it whatsoever. You call me, you email me. I have no problem with helping people out. Because one of the worst things that you and as a, as a human being could ever experience, and I said it earlier today, is closing your eyes and open them before God and him telling you, you did not accomplish what I called you to actually accomplish in life. That you were only a fraction of what you could have been had you just stretched out and believed in the impossible. You did this, don't give up. Because you, you don't know when it's going to be over. You don't know when it's going to end. I could die tomorrow, right? It's very possible. I, I know friends that have died at 30 and 31, but I'm telling you, don't let the sun go down without investing in your future and wake up tomorrow with your journal by your bedside, read your journal, right? Read your affirmations, read your goals, write at your vibration zone, talk about what you're going to accomplish, read that word of affirmation, read that prayer, and start your day believing and manifesting the faith that you need to accomplish what God has accomplished you. Man, I, words cannot describe how grateful I am that I got to sit down and talk with you, how grateful I know the audience will be when they hear this. And um, I, I, I think that whatever you have to do to get this in front of as many people as possible, you got to do it. You okay. got to do it because this is this is an on time message that's needed by so many people. And so I'm just saying here in front of the world, because we don't know where this will go. Right. That's like whatever true. I can do to support you and make sure that this gets out, um, that everyone should be liking, sharing, sending this out to people, because we all need to live out and up to the potential of what we were put here on Earth to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. I, and I, I, 
appreciate our friendship and your willingness to even bring me on today and to be able to share a little bit about my story and this journal and you know hopefully it won't be the last time you know we got we always chat and trying to find new ways and new strategies to develop as people and as entrepreneurs right and as, as individuals and as christians and believers and so i look forward to being to collaborate in the future with you and i'm, I'm grateful again for the chance to share uh this this new venture this new you know tested and proven method of faith and i'm just excited about what the future holds. Who knows where it could take us, right? I just, you never know. But my faith said in 2021 to release my book. And here we go. I'm taking that step. And here here we are. We're going to see where it takes us. Hey, uh, what did Matt, was it Matt Batterson say? You sometimes never always know. Um, That's right. Yeah, so we don't know. But yeah. we trust God you and never we know. Know commit to manifesting our faith. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. Make sure you like, share, tag people, and we will see you soon on our next episode. Take care.